Welcome back to another YouTube exclusive for Indie Ball Nation. I have Nick from Indie Ball Report, which is different from Indie Ball Nation. By that, I mean I'm a squatter on his podcast on a semi-permanent basis, and he comes over here and patronizes my just chaos of ranking things and talking random uh, deep dives, and he just sits yeah. and he nods occasionally and really plays along, which is great of him. How you doing, Nick? Hey, you know, doing all right, doing my community service, so it's all good. Oh, that's how this came around. Makes sense. Yeah, you know. Uh, Today, we're going to be talking about some things that did us uh, very little service to the community, uh, but maybe some things that are better than others. We're going to be talking yeah. about Atlantic League rules that have come and gone during the era of MLB uh, rule changes and things of the like, the experimental rules, if you will. So uh, we'll kind of go over it one at a time. I have got the list of rules in front of me on my second screen, so hopefully that making a disaster of it. And I will actually go over what each rule is as we start it. So are you ready? We're gonna we're gonna put it as keep it, change it, or trash it. I think that's a fair way to go about things, do you? Yeah, I think that's pretty fair. I mean, there may be some that are, are just kind of neutral, so I won't even bother changing. I just don't care that it exists, but yeah. Uh fair. Yeah, it's a good point. Well, I think we'll probably have a few in there. Yeah. Um okay. The first one we have is the automated balls and strikes. We're not talking about the challenge system that is being run. We are talking about the home plate umpire assisted in calling balls and strikes by a track man radar tracking system. And by assisted, we do mean it will tell him if it's a ball or strike. It's not like a backup system that you can go to for challenges. Yeah. Also keep in mind here too, for when they put this in, mm -hmm. the umps could overrule what the computer said. So it didn't really, you know, matter. the issue was in practice, they almost never did. Yeah. They would they would occasionally just overlook for a whole game to be like, no, nah, we're not going to use it because it seems off, but like, or something wasn't working right. But usually, unless it was really egregious, they would kind of give it the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like this is in like the change category because, like, in theory, it was good, but in practice, it needed work and needed correction. Uh, I don't hate it as much as other people do, and I know the players really didn't like it, especially the first iteration where the strike zone was real wonky. Mm -hmm. So, you know, every time the newer iterations where they kind of sort of fixed the zone and went to a 3D zone, which wasn't much better, uh, <laughs> then, like, you know, maybe it, it changes a bit, but I feel like it's firmly in the change category of just, like, keep refining it until we get something that works right. My question... I guess would be if we say the challenge system might be the best version of it are we yeah. are is that changing it or no, something completely different i think oh, it's so changing this, it so this is like the the wooden ship question where it's like if you keep changing up the boards on a ship but keep the name is it the same boat or is it a new boat uh, yeah kind of i mean i think it's a change i'm willing to meet you with change yeah because like, that's, that's what i think yeah. with it i think the challenge system is best i agree though that they could probably do something was not right with it it was very much like it was a disaster, essentially. Like the way yeah. they they realized the strike zone was an issue, like the specifics of it, which was never fully defined. I guess for this kind of situation, uh, yeah. the way the pitchers immediately took advantage of it, the way the hitters would take advantage of it, the other way, it was a gross, gross situation. So yeah, yeah. It, it was not good. Um, all right, change it. That's fine. All right, yeah. no mound visits. No, this is all from the 2019 rule set, by the way. Yeah, no mound visits are permitted by players or coaches other than for pitching changes or medical issues. Crash it. They need Crash at least it. a few of them. Like, okay. here's the thing. I don't mind limiting it. Okay. I really don't. I have a problem with none. Yes, I think agreed. that part of it is sometimes you do need, like, just a powwow on the meeting, right? Yeah. Like, you need to go there, have a meeting right at the mound, whether that's because your pitcher is shaking up a bit and it's like, okay, he's been hit around a little bit mm -hmm. or he's missed his spot, like, two at-bats in a row. I need as a catcher to go out there and talk to him. It's part of the job as a catcher is just like, you know, horse whispering the pitchers. So I, that's part of it. The other part of it is just sometimes, you know, we don't need to go at a breakneck pace for baseball. Like the three batter minimum, I like that one. We'll get to that in a minute. And there's other, you know, time reduction ones in here, which I think are positive. The mound visit one, I think a limited number, keeping it to like, say, one or two an inning or like five across the game, something like that, I think is yeah. fair. I don't like none. Yes, I agree. And I, I I agree with that. And I would say that deserves a trash and not a change on that. Like, because, yeah. you know, we said the, I think the challenge system is a adjustment after they learn yeah. from the robo um, fully, uh, like fully robo thing. I think yeah. this one would be, 
by going i think limiting mound visits it's fine i think by going no mound visits it would be like instead of the reduced time between innings saying there's no time between innings or no warm-up tosses go out there and play that would feel like a totally different rule so i yeah. think no mound visits does fully go in the trash though we agree we support the the, the yeah. vibe of limited mound visits that's been good for everybody <laughs> yeah. well maybe not everybody that's too bad uh three batter minimum uh that is again from 2019 pitchers must face a minimum of three batters or reach the end of an inning before they exit the game unless the pitcher becomes injured like I was just saying, I like this rule. I I keep it. I think it works to keep the pace going. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily think it was too much of a problem beforehand, just because you have such a limited reserve of pitchers where you couldn't really afford to, you know, run a guy out there for like two batters and then take him out. More often than not, they were going to get through that inning, or they were going to get hit around a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for that sense, I don't think it was ever much of a necessity here. Obviously. They wanted to see it before they put it in Major League Baseball. That's the point behind most of these rules. But overall, keep it. I think it did its job. I agree. Um, for me, I hate that it got rid of the lefty specialist. I, I just oh, the like the I yeah, I like that. Like sort of odd guys getting in. I said as a like, yeah. small Big but fast rugby player. Yeah. Well, yeah, right. So yeah. that bothered me. But if given the option, you know, to you know, it. Yeah. it it's not really something you can change much. You know what I mean? So it's going to be trash or keep, and I'd rather keep it. So I'm putting it in the keep category with you there. Yep. All right. Moving right along then. Uh, how about bigger bases? Back in 2019, the Lank League really beat everyone to the punch here. Increases yep. the size of first, second, and third from 15 inches square to 18 inches square. Um, that's uh, my – I'll jump on this one first. Uh, my hot take is I'm okay with it to yeah. the point of I would be okay with the extension, like the softball style extension. Okay. It, it's, I think it's a safety issue for the most part. I think only a few, you could even argue it as like getting more guys on base because it would make it harder to do that. Like tag, like that yeah. reach tag. Uh, if there's a throw that pulls the guy off the base, it forces people to you know hit their target a little bit more. I don't see many negatives even going that far with it. So I'm okay with keeping it, but what do you think? Yeah. I mean, I, just gonna say this is the definition of a rule that I don't really think you could be upset about. I mean, mm -hmm. bigger bases are just a safer option for the fielder and for the base runner. So yeah, I don't really see why people would be upset about it. So I yeah, agree. That, keep it. Yep. All right. That was a quick one. Look at us. Uh 2019 shift limits requires two infielders to be on each side of second base when a pitch is released. If not, the ball is dead and the umpire can call a ball. What do you think on shift limits? This is the definition of a rule where I understand this was put in for testing purposes solely because no one's shifting around here. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. For those who don't know, the Atlantic yeah. League had like no shifting beforehand. And then they kept citing how the data changed and there was more offense. And it was just because there was more offense in 2019. And it's like, yeah. well, yeah. <laughs> that also, we didn't really have a base sample to work off of. We had a sample mm -hmm. where it could be any one of these rules, any of the ones you see on screen now. Uh, yeah. could have been the cause of it could have been more robo umps from just you know missing spots having a weird strike zone it could have been a three batter minimum keeping to do it in could have been from mound visits there's a lot of reasons so it's kind of hard to yes. get any sort of scientific answer as to yeah, yeah. this is why six uh, of these rules are 2019 and that's before they realize six of the 10 they're 2019 yeah. that's before they realized hey you can only do so many of these at once while still getting any kind of quality data because if you switch everything at one time no one can tell what impact it had exactly so yeah. With that in mind, I mean, I don't really care that much. Um, like, I I lean towards trash it because my thought process regarding the shift has always been, if you want to beat it, hit the ball the other way. I know, easier mm -hmm. said than done. Mm -hmm. You could also get really good at bunting and just bunt the other way and then say, as a fielder, you're going to have to field your position to the pitcher. Or if we're going to see how fast that catcher can get up from his crouch, get a ball and throw it down to first. Mm -hmm. So I always thought there was an inherent way to beat the shift, even just choking up on your bat more and just trying to hit a little chopper down the line mm -hmm. would do it. Because let's be real, it doesn't have to get out of the infield for you to make it down to first base as long as you're an uh, average to above average runner. So I never really thought of it as that necessary. But then again, I've also had a different mindset in regards to the shift. Mm -hmm. So I would probably be in line to say trash it for A, there's, you know, a natural downside to a shift and B, 
it didn't do anything. No one shifted here. Even, even if you wanted to shift, the only way you were getting that was from eye observation. There was no like mm -hmm. advanced data outside of like maybe a spray chart, but even then I wouldn't call that advanced data. I just call that having to do tracking where the ball landed. Yeah. So from my perspective, I actually was fully on the anti shift limitation and then yeah. I've come around on the other end of it now. Yeah. Is it, the simplest thing can be and talking to some players was just like, it's the hardest thing to do in sports. Yeah. Shifting just makes it harder. Like, and if, you know, we, we, the, when we talk about how like the pitching is going to keep getting better and better and the uh, hitting can only really get so much better that like giving the added thing of, even if you do make contact, if it goes into it, like they also have their defense completely set up in a way where it's good luck getting it through. So you have to swing for the fence or strike out, you know, that's, that's where I started running into issues with it in my head. And that's where I started shading toward the, I'm okay with it. So we might have a disagreement here. I can indicate that, but like, yeah. I'm, I'm okay with shift limits. And that is something I never would have thought about a few years ago being okay with, but yeah, yeah. that's where I'm at. I, I'm, I'm okay with the shift limits. Call me crazy. But. God. You know, this is, this is like an NL fan being all right with the DH. It's a sin, but whatever. Good luck, man. I'm that's going to be a topic coming up in a second. So let me just adjust this fully. All right, moving through here, I've got reduced time between innings, time between innings and pitching Three changes times. reduced from 205 to 145. That's two minutes and five seconds to one minute and 45. Okay, okay. 20 seconds. All right. Like, yeah, uh, sure. I, I just, fine. yeah, it's like I just hope there's not a line at the sinks in the bathroom. All right, fine. Yeah, right. I mean, I think you could argue that maybe it doesn't help concession sales, but that's really all you got. I mean, even then, though, most of these ballparks are set up in a way where you could, in theory, watch the game from the line. It might make so. more open concourses. I'm okay with that. So yeah, Exactly. I'm yeah. all right. Keep it. Yeah. May bring back the 360 concourse. We need an era of 360 concourses. You know, that's, yeah, I'm okay with it. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing worse than the one that dead ends in the outfield. You know, I'll walk all the way back around. That's okay. a tough scene. Yeah. A horseshoe is just not. <laughs> cooperative no nah, man what are we doing here all yeah. right uh next last 2019 rule finally we we're more than halfway uh <laughs> the stealing first rule aka the uh. drop first pitch rule uh so it's the longest explanation of all of them and i think that says something batters are able yeah. to advance to first base on any pitch that is not caught in the air by the catcher even with first base occupied by a runner those who get to first base safely will be awarded a hit which is a whole other can of worms Mm. I'm yeah. trash it. I'll say yeah. it. I'll trash it. The, the players hate it so much that they boycotted it. The one dude did it got in the Hall of Fame. And I was going to say, you're taking out. Tony Thomas out of the Hall of Fame with this. Look, Tony Thomas can keep it. I'm not taking it. I'm saying now we can trash the rule. Oh, so he can take his cleats back? No, keep keep him in the Hall. Oh, it's cleats. still noteworthy. Terrible. But, hey, look. Yeah, no, this, this uh, rule is stupid as hell. I mean, I, I remember so when the, I think it was either the first or second time there was an opportunity for this. And what was it like? I think it may have been Somerset. Oh, there you go. And New Britain. And I want to say it was like Deaza who yeah. had the chance and instead he just stepped out of the box and waited for the for the catcher to get the ball. Yeah, and it is funny how quickly yeah. it became like one of those things of like, hey, we're not gonna do this if you don't do this. Like kind of like a just a yeah. gentleman's agreement of sorts. It was oh, yeah. it, and, and they got annoyed about it. Yeah, they did. It's like, look, you can't make us like you yeah. can try. You can threaten us however you want, but like this is we're playing baseball here. I agree. Yeah. That was so um, surreal to see that because I, I vaguely remember like the dugout applauding him for not running down the first. Yeah, I'm with you there. I remember that. Yeah. And that was like the moment where it's like, oh yeah, these guys aren't doing this. Mm -mm, absolutely not. Yeah. All right, on to 2021 rules. Uh, the double hook DH rule. The double hook DH allows teams to use a DH throughout the game on the condition that the starting pitcher completes at least five innings. If the starter does not pitch through the fifth inning, the team cannot use its DH for the rest of the game. I love the double hook DH. Yeah. Uh, so before I get into it, what I remember this being modified or something somewhere down the line. I think it became if you get into the fifth inning rather than complete yeah. the fifth inning. I think okay. that might be the change. Yeah. And I th am I crazy to think that at one point they added like an injury caveat in there? 
they might have. I know I talked about they should do it. I'm not sure if they fully yeah. went that direction, but it, I remember it is, teams complaining it sucks about because a guy gets hurt, and also it does open up the risk of like if a guy is like injured, him trying to push through another inning. But that yeah. risk has always been there, so it's not like yeah. a new thing. Yeah, yeah. From my perspective, I know you're a pro DH guy. All right, pro. Uh, I was gonna no say, DH don't, guy. don't put that. I'm, so an anti DH guy. I'm also yeah, anti. Don't slander my name like that. I'm open to this one because it keeps the DH while also motivating teams to keep that starting pitcher in. And if you are thinking, well, that's not really a big deal to me, think of it in the context of MLB playoffs where they're doing they're not letting guys get through the fourth inning a lot of the time because you know the the times through the order thing comes up. I, I like that this adds the the carrot to or maybe the stick in a way, perhaps both, yeah. uh, to keeping that pitcher in there. And you know, it was a lot of people like the you know the the long-term struggle of the two starters against each other um i don't really care as much about that for a yeah. plot line i like the guys coming in but i like that it does keep the game moving a little bit and it, it allows for you know us to stop relying so heavily on bullpen guys who might be halfway dead depending on how the week has gone yeah fair uh so off the bat i don't like the dh as a general rule but my beef with the dh is less in minor leagues and youth mm -hmm. leagues and more on the major league level i just mm -hmm. kind of believe that on the major league level if you want to call everyone there an athlete which they are they should be doing every element of the game and if we're going to say well you know a pitcher's job is to pitch not to hit i go well yeah and then the nine guys in the field their job is to field not to hit so why don't we just do nine guys hitting nine guys fielding and call it good yes so, i agree yeah, so let's yep. go. Football doesn't. Football's been around for forever. Mm -hmm. So, you know, football and baseball got basically the same timeline. What's keeping that around? And don't start to talk to me about, well, in the 1840s, baseball mm -hmm. was, yeah, totally different, not the same game. So, yeah, uh, not even comparable. Everyone um, likes Shohei hitting and pitching. Boy, do I have news for them. Yeah. So, yeah. and I'm not, and I'm not going to go too much on my whole, uh, you know, pedestal here to go and make my case here, but. Bartolo Colon hitting that home run was by far the one of the most achieving moments of that season. Yes. So whatever on that point. Regardless, I'm fine with the DH on the independent level because more people are getting showcased, and their goal obviously isn't to stay in the Atlantic League or the American Association or the Frontier League or whatever league they may be in. Their goal is to get back to affiliate ball. Best way to do that is to get reps. Best way to get reps is to get more guys playing. So the double hook DH does feel like a fair compromise it does feel like it also adds some strategy it adds some sort of an incentive now yes. granted also again you have the element of it's hard to find pitching in independent mm -hmm. ball especially as the year goes on and especially once you get through like june where everybody gets rated and then nobody gets anything in july because trade deadline nobody wants to you know start stocking up when they can be trading for stuff right um, that's all said. I'm not sure if it works 100% here, that, but I would still keep it. Yes, I agree. And I think my two closing thoughts on it, uh, the the reason I don't like the DH mostly is because it takes out so much strategy. It takes out all the double switch position uh, possibilities. It takes out yeah. you know a lot of late game decision making on pinch hitting. I like that this actually adds more decision making because it adds the complication. Not only is it tied in like, the normal decision tree in a game of like, should I take this guy out? It adds in the com the complication of you're also losing a DH, so it's like really adding weight to it. I like the fact that it keeps late game decisions in for at least if you pull a guy early, you can have the double switches still happening and moves like that. And I like the aspect. I'm a Phillies fan. Uh, as somebody who is anti DH, I can't argue the fact that I would not have seen Bryce Harper this past year and a half if we did not have a DH. Like it just, you know, the, he would have been gone uh, because he couldn't throw, but hey, he could still hit. Um, I was like a first baseman to me. Well, yeah, so that's a whole other can of worms. But the, you know, even that I think would have been improved by the double hook at least because now there's the interesting aspect of like, okay, we're rolling the dice, we're putting Harper in that lineup, but now our guy's struggling on the bump in the third inning. And we're like, he, even last year where he straight up could not field, oh man, like now you're losing Bryce Harper and a starting pitcher. Like, okay. So I like that. I don't know. I would, I'm going to, I would put it and keep it is what I guess we're landing on. Yeah. For, it's just yeah, in, I in understand the Atlantic that you would prefer it just, be yes, yeah. in the Atlantic League, it's a great rule. Um, yeah. we'll see. Okay, moving into 2023, we'll wrap it up here. Um, well, you forgot, uh, actually... you forgot about one that's sitting there that's what not from 23. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know why I wrote this as 20. Yeah, you're right. Move the pitching rubber back. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, so the, wasn't that 21 or 22? Like yeah, you're right. That was 2021. Yeah. Um, yeah, the move pitching rubber. Good call on that one. Yeah. Um, we got, I mean, I, I'm trash on it. It's exactly what it sounds like. I feel oh, like yeah. Yeah, it's more, more offense. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. awful. Not to mention the way the league handled it, too. It was horrific. Horrific, and there was a lot. Yeah. MLB continues to cite the fact that it did not do any damage to anybody injury-wise because the injury list did not see any bumps. But that's because I know for a fact there was increased complaints of soreness and all of that. So, like, oh, yeah. it is. it does not need to be a full injury to be an, an issue. Like, yeah, what are we it can doing build here? up over time. Yes. All it now, takes is being extra sore going out for that extra start. And then you mm-hmm. try to push through it because you have that double hook thing in there. And next thing you know, it went from a sore shoulder to, hey, his arm's actually kind of screwed. So you don't have him for the next two weeks. Yes. As I catch the fact that I did miss a single disengagement one. So we got our two 2023 rules left. Designated pinch runner. I'm going to be up front. I'm a trash on it. It's just dumb. Um, yeah, I've seen uh, guys. Like, teams I don't using remember it. it. It's okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. It is. Uh, it does the pitch. The uh, the moving the rubber. By the way, was distance from pitching rubber was going to be extended at first 24 inches. Then they met in the middle at 24 or at 12 inches, which is either way is stupid. So yeah, yeah, it was trash. Um, designated pinch runner. Okay, it, each club will list a player who is not otherwise in the starting lineup as a designated pinch runner. So you have to like list them before the game. The player may then be substituted at any point into the game as a base runner once, which should be noted. Uh, it doesn't actually say that in a rule, but once. Yeah. The player who is substituted for, substituted for as well as the pinch runner may then return to the game without penalty. So then your pinch runner can again be used as just a regular player and your base runner who you took out remains in the game. I see what they're trying to do here. Mm, I think it's dumb. I just think it's like, what are we doing? I like Karen Score it loves it. Yeah. But like I, I think it's an interesting bit of strategy, but I just don't think it's interesting. And uh, it's something it could warm up to. I feel like, but I'm I don't see an I don't see it as a necessity. And my yeah my my typical reaction is it's baseball. If it's not necessary, don't do it. Fair, yeah. yeah. I mean, I I'm not gonna say change it. I'm fine trashing it. I don't really care about one way or the other. I don't think it's you know. Mm-hmm. I think it's one of those rules that in practice it wasn't as good as it could have been in theory. So I'm I'm cool just getting rid of it. I can be convinced to like it if it's shown to be keeping guys in the game, like if it's creating some jobs. Yeah. Like if it if this is uh, like the D, there's the DH argument. If there's just some guys yeah. who if they can't like pull holes at the end of his career, like you look mm-hmm. like that ex, you know he's still playing Harper again with the injury thing but like if you can show me like this is essentially creating jobs I could get on board but like until then I just can't really get with it yeah um all right single disengagement rule um, kind of goes back to the I'm not really never mind yeah unlike the new MLB rule which allows a pitcher to disengage from the rubber twice during an at bat the Atlantic League uh will only permit a single disengagement per at bat in 2023 so Don't that like you can step off once and then the batter know the runner knows you can't step off again unless you successfully pick them off. Uh if you do not, it is a bulk. Terrible. So yeah, I don't like it. I would say I would almost say I'm okay with the double disengagement, I guess. Only See, because if you're doing the pitch clock, which I didn't like at first, but I'm warming up to, mm-hmm. then you have to have some sort of disengagement rule. I understand that. I just yeah. don't think one is the answer. I'm almost down to say, leave the pit. The pitch clock remains running during the disengagement. So we're going to have this thing continuing to run. You want to throw over, that's fine, but the pitch clock's not going to reset for your next pitch. Or maybe it only like buys you five seconds. Like it adds five on. Like if you're at yeah. okay. seven and you throw back, now you're at 12, but it's running or something like that. I yeah. can see that. I think it's a change. I think yeah. it's bad enough to trash, but I think it's a change. Exactly, like, cause like the it's goal. I agree with it's goal yep. of just stopping a guy thrown over like five mm-hmm. times and then taking another time where he's got to step up, grab the rosin bag, toss it around a bit, run it through his hair, tap mm-hmm. it on his arm. Like just do garbage like that. It's like, you're slowing this down. You don't need to do this. Yep. You just stay on there and throw the ball. So I agree with that, but mm-hmm. it's just one of them. You're giving such an overwhelming, you know, advantage to a base runner, and you're changing the bat so much because now at the the batter knows you can't step off, so he mm-hmm. you're 
he knows he got to do something there. And anyone mm-hmm. that's on base knows I could take a bigger lead now and be fine. Yes. I'm a hundred percent with you there. Um, and as far as it goes, I'm just pulling up before we close out this video, I'm pulling up the 2022 and 2023 numbers. Um, stolen bases in 2022, we were looking at uh, 1,539 stolen to like 385 steals, so like an 80% clip. Uh, this one, this year, we're looking at... Uh, do, do, do. Uh, it's a about 1100 and then called about 2500 times so honestly it's about the same but my my thing on it would be the way that the shift limits didn't really change atlantic league play i think uh single disengagement in mlb would start to really change it oh yeah um i yeah. i forget what the exact number was but the stolen base success rate after guys thrown over twice is high now that's yeah. obviously skewed by the fact that if you threw over twice it's probably a good base runner yeah. um but it's it feels it's, like a rule I think MLB guys, they would take advantage of it with a higher frequency. Yeah, it, it it's definitely one. a rule that's meant to drive up stolen bases, but it feels like how in a zoo they try to make the enclosure look like the natural habitat, whatever animal is there. That's what this rule kind of is. It's like we're artificially creating more stolen bases. It's like, yeah, it's not exactly the same, though, and nobody that's, you know, looking in at it is going to start thinking, wow, you know, these stolen bases, they're back. They're going to think, well, yeah, he can't throw over. That's why they're bad. I would actually argue that the sing- the double disengagement is more like trying to create a, a normal scene, kind of like you do in a zoo, while the yeah. single that while still preserving you know, the sanctity of the pitch clock. I would say that the single disengagement is more like just leaning on the scales for base runners. Like It's more like now you're officially trying to weight this to benefit the runner for a result that you're trying to get rather than just trying to speed the game up generally speeding the game generally i mean you can argue helps offense or whatever but this is this rules feels more particular to like let's help base runners steal more bases rather than let's you know just keep the game moving yeah fair enough all right so there we go so we're keeping the three better minimum the bigger bases the shift limits the reduced time between innings and the double hook dh we would change the robo ump in eh, any number of ways but we agree that generally speaking uh you know the less it's good yes exactly and the single disengagement should really be adjusted but we get what they're going for um the no mound visits uh the shift limits the stealing of first the moved pinch uh moved pitching rubber and the designated pinch runner all can find themselves in the trash i feel pretty good about our work here today nick yeah, well, I mean, fairness to the shift limit, we had a disagreement on, but yes. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. The shift limits, I feel one way, you feel the other. Uh, no. I'm right, you're wrong. I'm Ryan, you're Nick. Where can they find you You other than, well, no, you no. just go ahead and do your thing. I'll let you do it. Yeah, I was going to say, normally you're I just point pro. the background here, but instead I have lovely Bridgeport, Connecticut behind me. Love it, uh, man. Never forget. Yeah, and meanwhile, I have another uh, no longer existing Atlantic League team in the Somerset there, too. And another team that doesn't exist in New Jersey Cardinals. We're really just like, fading off into the distance today uh but yeah like you can find the show to days gone by my man go exactly. ahead exactly better days but uh uh you can find the show wherever you find like podcasts very much search up indie ball report on the internet we'll go with that we'll really go into the olden days <laughs> just look it up on the internet you'll find it we're the only ones that have that title so do that i say follow us on twitter but who knows if twitter will exist when this comes out it could fall apart or my I mean- mistake on X, the artist formerly known as Twitter, the platform formerly yeah. known as Twitter. Uh, you can find me other than on this YouTube exclusive uh, on our YouTube channel. You can also find podcast exclusives and things that are both the podcast uh, format and YouTube format. You can find that on just about any uh, platform you would like for podcasts. I mean, I, I used to list them, but that's a mess. Don't do that. Yeah. Um, however, you are desired, just search for Indie Bull Nation and see if it pops up. If it doesn't, maybe let me know. Maybe I'll see if I can get there. Other than that, I'm Nick. No, I'm Ryan. Yeah, You're you Nick. are Nick. Congrats. Oh, I hate this is like the inevitable Indie Ball Nation. You know what's funny? In my head, I was trying to replicate the one you do of the I'm Nick, he's Ryan. And I'm just like, I'm Nick. Oh, uh. See, that's why you can't copy my style. This feels like the right place to end this video. <laughs> and <Yeah>. we're good. <laughs> I may not have a lot, but I love what I got. A four by four and a good fishing spot. I hope this time my card won't decline.